Ja, dear Mr. Thomori, Mr. Urata, distinguished guests, it's a great uh, honor and, and pleasure uh, to be invited today uh, by such a uh, prestigious uh, think tank as uh, Rieti and present uh, the German views on uh, economic uh, security. Uh, let me start with um, a, a general overview. Um, why now talking about economic security? Uh, we find ourselves now in a world with many complex insecurities. So the COVID-19 pandemic was still in full swing when Russia started its war of aggression in Ukraine and more recently geopolitical tensions as instabilities in the Middle East have been a persistent cause for great concern. And here in the Indo-Pacific region as well, um, we have been witnessing a deterioration of the security environment for years and more and more strategic challenges, including the possibility of military conflicts. Um, Germany and Japan share the same outlook on international security. We, um, as pluralistic uh, democracies, are committed um, to protecting and preserving the rules-based international order. It is the foundation for the security, prosperity, and social stability of our highly export-oriented um, economies. But it's not just about uh, Germany and Japan. Uh, thanks to the universally applicable and transparent rules governing, governing the relations between states and uh, the trade relations, this order and the values and principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter have um, helped the international community to experience decades of stability, security, and growing prosperity. However, Russia's war of aggression has just highlighted how fragile this order is, and we have to protect it and defend it. And by we, uh, I don't only mean individual states on their own, but the entire global community. So before we start about uh, talking about economic security, um, we have to ask ourselves um, at the very basic level, what are we doing for our own security in times like these? Um, <clears throat> and that means we have to protect um, ourselves from war and violence in the first line. Um, to that end, we have to become robust and protect um, ourselves and our allies from external violence. Um, we have surely protected also ourselves uh, in the, the, the past, but um, our focus was mainly on crisis management worldwide, less on territorial defense. But Russia's aggression against Ukraine has shown that we also need to focus more on our national and on collective defense. Um, that is why we are investing strongly in uh, our federal army, the Bundeswehr, um, and that is why we are consolidating um, the uh, forces of NATO and protecting the eastern flank of the alliance. And, is, and that is why we also are strengthening the European Union, because the EU is um, not only our economic, but also our peace insurance. Um, however, security does not just mean the absence of war. Um, security means to have the ability to shape the form in which we live, um, our democracy, and our economies um, in the way we want, uh, without political constraint, but also without economic dependency. And this now brings me finally to the <laughs> discussion we want to have today about economic security, um, about how a country like Germany can safeguard its economy, how it can maintain its competitiveness, and how it can ensure the security of its supply chain, all while cooperating, or cooperating and continuing to cooperate within the European framework. What are Germany's um, uh, policy instruments in economic security? Um, 
And precisely because it is impossible to separate the, economic entire, the economy entirely from hard security, Germany's economic security policy intertwines multiple areas, namely national defense, economic autonomy within a free and open international order, and thirdly, resilience against external and internal threats. This also reflects Germany's commitment and special responsibility to contribute to European security given its economic strength, diplomatic cloud, and its history. What are our economic security policy tools? Um, it rests on three pillars. First, Germany's um, national security strategy. Second, its China strategy. And third, the EU economic security strategy all of the three released last year in summer. Germany's first ever national security strategy recognizes economic security as a critical dimension for our overall security. It manifests our commitment to work also with our regional states, the Bundesländer, federal states, with enterprises and with international partners um, to develop and improve measures to tackle economic sabotage and espionage. The con concept of de-risking is also reflected in the EU economic security strategy, which seeks to first promote by strengthening the competitiveness of European companies, second, protect them against risks, and third, to expand partners by fostering cooperation with partner countries. We have made significant strides uh, in the protect section, but we would definitely li uh, like to strengthen further our ties with partners. And lastly, um, a holistic approach to economic security also means that Germany's China strategy um, is also a considerable and significant part of our economic security policy. Uh, it reflects a complex relationship that we have uh, with China, shaped by economic inter interdependence, strategic competition, and security concerns. Germany recognizes China as a crucial trading partner, a key market for exports, and a significant source of investment. With our bilateral trade volume of more than 250 billion euros in 2020-23, China remained our largest trading partner for the eighth year in succession. However, there is an increasing awareness of the challenges and risks associated with this economic relationship, um, particularly in terms of dependency and technology transfer. And I would like to say, cite what the um, China strategy states. De-risking is urgently needed, and we are not blind to the fact that German companies continue to face disadvantages in China, including restricted market access, exclusion from public procurement, and unequal competition. I will come back to these uh, difficult, different implica implications posed uh, by China for each of the focus areas in economic security that I will uh, deal with uh, during um, this presentation. Next, um, I would like to move away from politics and enter um, into specific uh, examples of economic security, starting with trade and investment. German, Germany's economic security policy places a strong emphasis on fostering a stable and open international trade environment. We are, going, we are strong supporters of the WTO and also via the EU, members of a growing number of free trade agreements with lower market barriers worldwide. We work to protect and promote Germany's interests, uh, not only through the uh, enforcement of trade agreements, um, but also with investment screening mechanisms. Um, 
Germany has widened its foreign direct investment screening process in 2021 in order to uh, uh, cover even more critical sectors and lower the thresholds for screening to include, uh, to include even more um, acquisitions by non-EU uh, companies. These sectors typically include infrastructure, high-tech, energy, and communications. Other amendment to inbound FDI screening is currently in stages of consultation in Germany. This is meant not only to protect against unwanted influence on Germany's critical infrastructure, but also to prevent the transfer of key technologies and expertise that could compromise Germany's economic and national security. With regards to China, Germany is keen on maintaining its strong trade relations with China, but is committed to addressing some serious concerns over market access, intellectual property protection, and fair competition. We have been advocating uh, with China for a more reciprocal economic relationship since long, where German companies can compete fairly in the Chinese market. To this end, investment in screening has become a crucial tool in Germany's economic security policy to prevent the transfer of critical technologies and expertise to China that could undermine our economic and national security interests. Let me mention one of the most high-profile cases that was the acquisition of KUKA Robotics uh, by Midea, a Chinese electrical appliance manufacturer in 2016 already, <coughs> so eight years ago. Um, this deal has uh, raised concerns um, and has started a um, intense debate in, in Germany uh, how we can um, safeguard um, the um, German interests and um, deal with concerns about the transfer of advanced technology uh, out of our industrial sector. Another important area to discuss is energy security. Um, definitely a very critical aspect of Germany, Germany's economic security policy, especially after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. It has shown our vulnerabilities, um, given our strong dependence we had before on Russian gas. And uh, it's safe to say um, that uh, we paid for every cubic meter of Russian gas twofold and threefold with our national security. This was a significant motor in our efforts uh, to transition to renewable energy resources and reduce the dependence on fossil fuels. Um, also, um, both um, key components of our energy transition policy. Uh, we are focusing on diversifying our energy supply routes and sources, uh, as well as uh, on enhancing um, energy efficiency. For us, cooperation within the European Union is crucial in this area, and that is why Germany is actively participating in the creation of a European energy union and is supporting initiatives to integrate energy markets um, and improve energy security across member states. Germany and the EU's efforts uh, to diversify their energy sources, including LNG imports from the US or exploring alternative gas supplies through the Southern Gas Corridor from Azerbaijan. Um, something to keep in mind um, in terms of energy security is that China is a global leader in the production of photovoltaic panels um, and other renewable energy technologies. Uh, so our energy uh, transition policy in a certain way also depends in part on technology and components sourced from China. This reliance on Chinese imports for the energy transition presents both opportunities but also vulnerabilities for German energy security that we need to keep monitoring. 
As we have already mentioned, uh, the protection of critical infrastructure, uh, when uh, I spoke about investment screening, um, critical infrastructure always, almost always uh, also entails some aspects of cybersecurity. Uh, with the increasing digitization of the economy, cybersecurity has, been, has become a paramount concern for all developed industrial countries and also for Germany. Um, we have Im implemented robust cybersecurity strategies uh, to pro protect our critical infrastructure, such as power grids, telecommunications, and financial services from cyber threats. Germany cooperates with its uh, European partners in order to strengthen cyber resilience, share threat intelligence, um, and develop joint uh, responses to cyber incidents. As mentioned earlier, Chinese investments in Europe's critical infrastructure, including ports, telecommunications, and energy networks, have raised concerns um, about security and uh, dependence on Chinese technology and investments. We are particularly cautious um, about protecting our critical energy infrastructure from foreign control. Um, And that has changed how we engage with China in uh, uh, investments in the technology uh, and in the, um, uh, in, uh, in, in the energy sector. Um, the German government intervened uh, during the acquisition process of a 20% stake of the Chinese state-owned company, State Grid Corporation of China, <coughs> in a critical electric electricity transmission company, a 50 hertz transmission. Eventually, the German state-owned bank, KfW, uh, instead acquired the stake. <clears throat> and in terms of cybersecurity, um, the digital transformation of energy systems and increasing importance of cybersecurity and energy security um, have also become important aspects of Germany's economic security policy towards China. Um, that is, in fact, um, the case uh, primarily in, uh, in, in digital infrastructure, including 5G networks, um, where Chinese companies play a significant role. Um, and um, Germany has introduced tighter rules for all suppliers of 5G network equipment, uh, including the certification of critical components and requirements for manufacturers to, signify, to sign a no-spy agreement. Germany's economic security also forces, uh, security policy also forces, focuses um, on securing the resilience of supply chains, uh, particularly for critical goods such as medical supplies and semiconductor components. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the vulnerabilities um, in, these, uh, in, in, in this sector um, and uh, underscored the need for greater diversification and resilience. Germany is working within the European Union to enhance supply chain transparency, reduce dependency on single suppliers, build strategic reserves for critical material and, and uh, critical materials. As we need to be wary of political supply chain disruptions for critical raw materials, China's recent restriction of germanium and gallium exports serve as a strong reminder, especially if we consider that, Germany, uh, that China controls 96% of the world's um, supply for gallium, which is necessary for many tech products. The country also began restricting the export of graphite in December 23, which uh, poses a significant risk to the stability of electric vehicle uh, supply chains and highlights the fragility of dependence on critical materials from China. In research and innovation, Germany acts twofold. First, in protecting um, aspect and second, in promoting aspect. 
On the pro uh, protecting side, uh, safeguarding technology and innovation is another key component of Germany's economic security policy. Our export control agency regularly shares information with universities and research institutes in order to raise awareness concerning dual-use technology research. On the promotion side, the German government is promoting the protection of intellectual property rights and supports research and development in strategic sectors like digital technologies, biotechnology, and artificial intelligence. We are also coll collaborating with the European Union and, and its uh, member states in, in order to foster a competitive and innovative European research area, thereby ensuring that the EU remains at the forefront of technological developments. As I've mentioned earlier, Germany's approach to economic security is deeply embedded within the EU framework, EU framework. and especially on the EU um, side, we have seen some remarkable progress in the recent month. Building on the European security strategy of June 23, the European Commission adopted a package of five initiatives uh, aiming to enhance the EU's economic security in January this year. The package contains a far-reaching revision of the EU foreign, divest, uh, foreign direct investment screening regulation, which has been in place for just over three years. But it contains also several early stage non-legislative non -legislative, legislative, legislative instruments. A white paper on outbound investment, export controls and dual rules research as well as proposed council recommendation on enhancing research security. These, package, um, the, these packages demonstrate that the EU takes national and economic security seriously, including the ability to respond to geopolitical trend, trends, tensions, and crises. Um, it adds um, instruments to the regulatory landscape in the foreign trade and national security space, um, and these instruments are increasingly converging. At the same time, the European Union continues to promote openness for trade, investment, and research in the interest of EU's economies. A coordinated European approach also includes advocating for a balanced approach to economic relations with major powers like China and the United States, ensuring that the EU's economic security policies do not lead to protectionism, but rather strengthen the EU's resilience and competitiveness on a global stage. There is an array of EU-level initiatives for economic security. For instance, uh, let me just cite some of them. Um, a critical raw material acts aimed at reducing dependency on critical raw materials, most of which are currently imported from few countries, including China. Um, these materials are essential for digital and green technologies, and um, we want to secure that by diversifying supply sources and increasing recycling, also that a very important um, aspect. Um, Germany and the EU are also working on building strategic reserves for critical materials and products. Um, during the, uh, the COVID-19 um, pandemic, the US, uh, EU established a stockpile of medical equipment, such as masks and ventilators. The Union has also established a European battery alliance um, in order to reduce Europe's dependency on imported batteries and raw materials required for battery production. Um, so the EU tends uh, to support the uh, development of a competitive battery industry in Europe um, and to, aims to build a full EU-based battery supply chain. And in uh, response to the global semiconductor shortage that we experienced in the last years, the EU has proposed the CHIPS Act 
aiming to boost Europe's semiconductor production capabilities. The goal is to increase EU's uh, share of global semiconductor manufacturing capacity um, by aspiring to double the EU's share of global, global semiconductor production to 20% of the world market in 2030. And uh, also very important, Germany um, and the EU are also pursuing trade agreements and partnerships with other countries and regions in order to uh, diversify supply chains. Um, the EU has been negotiating trade deals with Mercosur countries, as well as with Australia and uh, New Zealand, um, in order to assure a more diverse and secure supply of agricultural products, raw materials, and other goods. These measures I've, I've just mentioned um, reflect a strategic shift towards enhancing EU's autonomy, economic security, and resilience in the face of global supply chain challenges. By investing in domestic capabilities, diversifying supply sources, and building strategic re reserves, Germany and the EU aim to mitigate the risks associated with over-reliance on single suppliers. So as a conclusion, um, let me uh, stress again um, that Germany and Japan, as advanced economies with strong industrial base, but also with shared democratic values and strong parliamentary democracies, um, we do have considerable uh, potential for cooperation in various areas of economic security. Um, and we have very strong mutual interests that are worth defending them also commonly. Um, so it's, no, it's not by chance that we chose economic security as subject of the first intergovernmental uh, consultations that Germany and Japan held last year in March in Tokyo. Both our nations are leading innovators in technology and manufacturing. Um, are, um, and this makes it a, a natural fit to cooperate also um, in uh, technology um, development, um, research, um, especially in the fields like robotics, automotive technology, environmental technologies, and others where both countries are pioneers. In terms of economic security, supply chain resilience is a key area for cooperation. Um, we want to reduce both our countries' dependence on single sources, particularly in critical materials and in semiconductors. And it's with great interest that we see how strongly Japan is now building up its own semiconductor uh, industrial uh, basis. Um, also here, I think we have strong potential to work uh, together because also Germany is doing exactly the same. Another field for co co possible co co collaboration is the energy transition. Um, both Japan and Germany are committed to achieve uh, carbon neutrality, and we have been investing considerably in renewable energy, but also in hydrogen technology as part of our strategies in order to reduce greenhouse gas emission emissions. Joint projects in renewable energy development, energy storage solutions, and hydrogen supply chains could benefit both nations. Digital transformation and cybersecurity are additional fields where Germany and Japan can and should enhance their cooperation. As both countries navigate the challenges of digitizing their economies, we can share best practices and collaborate on securing dig digital infrastructure, protecting uh, that against cyber threats, and promoting the digital economy. Germany um, and Japan have also been able to cement their trade relations through the EU-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, which came into effect in 2019. Um, I think this um, 
agreement has really created new opportunities for trade and investment, um, and what was seen by both sides as a significant success story. So let me conclude by saying Germany and Japan share many similarities in their economic structures, are facing the same challenges, and are very suitable for even closer cooperation to share resources um, and um, make sure that challenges are met. By working together through platforms included, but not limited to regular intergovernmental consultations, um, I'm sure Germany uh, and Japan together can foster their economic security, achieve sustainable growth, and address global challenges together. Thank you very much for your attention.